Hello and welcome to Row Z, the West Ham News Roundup which can't quite work out why kicking yourself outside the box warrants a penalty. My name's Gonzo, I'm from Hammers Chat and I'm back in conjunction with Clara and Hugh to give you all the latest West Ham news. Well there's a lot of news so I'll rattle through it as quickly as possible but we can't start without addressing the issue at Stamford Bridge. Yes it was 2-2 against Chelsea but the referee had an absolute mare. Firstly, he allowed a free kick to be taken from 12 yards rather than 10. It allowed Fabregas the space and distance to get the ball up and over the wall, which made it 1-1. Probably the biggest travesty was when it was 2-1 to West Ham, the equalising goal was scored via a penalty. Ruben Loftus-Cheek appeared to kick himself outside the area, tumble into the box, when then the referee awarded the card, gave the penalty, and it was 2 all. It was extremely disappointing, but I do think it's a measure of West Ham's progress that we can go to Stamford Bridge, and Old Trafford for that matter, come away with a draw and still be disappointed. It does look like good times ahead and just with a little bit of luck we possibly would have been in the top four. The biggest news of the week was Cecu Chiatti's five-year deal. That keeps him at the club for really the prime years of his career. He's an excellent player. He's pivotal to the way Slaven Bilic wants to play. And it's just another indicator and even more proof that the club are different to how it used to be. Not only are we not selling our best players, we're tying them down to long-term contracts off the back of the Payet deal. It's excellent news. Now, Manuel Lanzini is also in talks at the moment. Only he's in talks, he's about to put pen to paper. The deal is all but done. Now, Claret and Hugh has led the way on this. If you remember a few months ago, there was talk about him signing for Liverpool. Apparently, Manchester City might have been interested, but the voice of reason and calm throughout said, no, 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 we are going to sign the deal. We have an option in place for 8 million quid and the deal will be done. It's either going to be completed and signed and announced at some point within the next 10 days, but it could be as soon as a couple. In terms of other players at the club, well, Roy Hodgson has announced his England squad, and surprise, surprise, Mark Noble is not in it. Well, not just Mark Noble, no West Ham player is in it. Mark Noble can feel aggrieved, but it was no surprise really, because we sort of knew that Hodgson wasn't going to put him in the squad. If you watch just before the squad announcement, I think it was Alan Shearer on Match of the Day, he asked Roy Hodgson directly, would you include Mark Noble in the squad? And on two occasions, he spoke of Danny Drinkwater when asked about Mark Noble, which told us all we wanted to know. So perhaps a bigger surprise is the fact that Antonio's not in there. How is that? Is there really an English winger in better goal scoring form than Mikel Antonio? I think not. And of course, Aaron Cresswell as well. My goodness, is, are there really two better left backs in the league than him? I don't know. I'm not a huge conspiracy theorist. I just think they've been unlucky. But if it, you're a West Ham player, you couldn't be blamed by being a little bit paranoid by the whole proceedings. Um, in terms of injury news, James Tompkins and James Collins will both be back after the international break that I just mentioned. That's going to give Billich some real options in the squad. We're going to have some fixture congestion, particularly at the start of April. So to have all our players back will really help, and particularly with our final push for top four and to try and get into an FA Cup semi-final. In terms of transfer news, there's heavy, heavy rumours that we have signed a pre-contract agreement with Havard Nordvelt from Borussia Mönchengladbach, which is easy for me to say. Now, he is the captain of that club. He's out of contract in the summer. Uh, he was previously on Arsenal's books for three years. He's a very, very good player. Can play defensive midfield, can cover a number of positions at the back. And Mönchengladbach on their Twitter account announced that he had signed a pre-contract agreement with us. Now, we can't get the club to confirm this, but we think that has more to do with the fact that there are current players on West Ham's books who they don't want to unsettle. The player, really, that I'm talking about most is Alex Song. I don't think this looks good for him. Again, that's not a surprise. It's also quite telling that in the heat of battle, Bilic will often go for Obiang as a replacement for either Noble or Kiate. So I think he really is quite far down the pecking order song. He might have a couple of choices with that fixture congestion, which I mentioned a minute ago. He's really going to have to do something special to earn himself a contract. Can't see it happening. And I think Nordvelt will be his replacement. Just finally, in case you missed it, West Ham ladies played their final 
game at Upton Park. It was against Tottenham Hotspur. It was a closely fought contest and the ladies won 1-0. The goal came from Katie Bottom. She is the captain. She also works for the club and it was her birthday so it really couldn't have got any better. It was a huge success. They broke their attendance record and it was a great opportunity for some of the fans to say goodbye to Upton Park if they couldn't quite get tickets for the normal league games. It was uh, there was a few incidents during the game and one of them was if I choose my words carefully, perhaps um, one of the Tottenham defenders fell on top of uh, striker Whitney Locke's head. But fortunately, Whitney is uh, she's absolutely fine. And they've gone on for, to have a good run of results following that victory. OK, that's about it from me. If you want to keep up with all the latest West Ham news, don't forget claretandhugh.info is the place to go. It's updated six or seven times during the day. There's good contacts within the club, so if anything happens in the world of West Ham, it's going to be on there. If you want to see any more of our videos, please do click the subscribe button. It's somewhere down there if you hover the cursor over it. That's going to keep you informed when we produce any more videos. We've got reviews, previews, betting shows, match day experiences, tours of the Olympic Stadium, all manner of things. Also, if you want to interact with us, talk to us directly, then our free forum is hammerschat.boards.net. Once again, we have match threads. We've got lots of things from fellow fans and anything that happens on Claret and Hugh is discussed on there. So please come and join up. It's free and interact with us on there. Right, that's about it. I'm off to kick myself repeatedly in the hope I can award myself a penalty. Until next week, goodbye.